Spectating is a great feature to have in any game, especially multiplayer games where players can die for an entire round and may go for several minutes without being able to actually play the game themselves. It allows for players to still feel involved within the world even though they are dead and are only spectating at this point. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a spectator pawn that is not only able to freely move about the entire map, but also has the option to increase and decrease the map so that way players are able to get even a wider or shorter view of everything going on in the scene. But before we go ahead and do that, if you enjoy this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments what other types of tutorials you guys would like to see in the future. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So I've gone ahead and gotten a project open here. Uh, now our spectator pawn is going to have a couple things for in terms of functionality. First off, I want to have our pawn be able to freely move about the space using locomotion. Um, and this also includes being able to fly above the scene, um, go through walls, all that kind of stuff. So one of the things that we're going to be implementing into our pawn is we'll actually be uh, allowing for our pawn to be able to freely move around both up, down, left, right, forward, back, wherever. Um, and we'll go and jump, and I'll go and show you how to do that once we get our pawn set up. Um, but the other thing we're going to want to add into our pawn as well is we'll also want to make sure that our pawn is actually able to scale up and down the world so, it can, so our players are able to see more or less however much they want here within the, uh, within the world. So I'm going to go and do a couple things before we go ahead and open up our pawn. Uh, first I want to go over into our project settings and I actually just want to check input. There's going to be a couple of uh, axis mappings we're actually going to end up using. We're going to be using both the movement axis left X as well as movement axis left Y. These are going to be used for our movement uh, and you can actually go ahead and hit, if you go ahead and click down here, you should be able to see what's going on here. Uh, and you should see also that these are already tied for, or these are already designed for multiple uh, VR headsets and their motion controller component and their motion controllers. And then I'm also going to be using the movement axis right Y. I'm going to be using this one for the scaling uh, just because I want to keep things nice and simple. I'm not going to bother trying to uh, scale up and down based off of how close our hands are and the grip buttons are being pressed or any of that kind of stuff. I, I'm just going to try and keep this simple. So uh, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead. I'm going to go and open up our uh, content browser here. I'm going to go cre create a new folder called Blueprints. Let's go and get that open. I'm going to create a new blueprint class of type pawn. And I'm just going to call this uh, spectator pawn. Now, uh, personally, I've never been very fond of pawns for a lot of uses in VR applications. Uh, the main reason is that pawns don't really have any sort of locomotion movement built in that also support gravity, uh, something that characters do do well uh, otherwise. Fortunately, we don't need to worry about gravity in this case, and spectators also have no collisions whatsoever. So we can actually go right in here and we can see all that we have is a single root component. Now, our root component, quite frankly, doesn't matter too much. We're not gonna be doing any sort of modifications to this. It's literally just a, uh, a point that we kind of consider the origin of wherever our player is. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of components to our spectator pawn here. First one's gonna be a camera. And I'm also gonna add two motion controllers. I'm gonna call one left motion controller. I'm gonna call the second one right motion controller. There we go. Now we don't need to do anything to, uh, to the camera itself. By the way, make sure your motion controllers are attached to the root, not to the camera. Uh, it, it, they will get messed up if you attach them to the camera, not the root. Uh, but you do want, you don't need to do anything here to the camera itself. We're actually gonna be leaving the camera entirely alone. However, if you'd like to do any sort of additional modifications here, you're of course welcome to come through here and uh, add any sort of adjustments that you would like to the camera itself. Uh, so go, going over to our motion controllers, there is one change that I do wanna make right now. I'm gonna go right into our right motion controller and I wanna change our motion source. You can see the default motion source is set to left. I wanna change this to right. This will basically set up so that way we are able, so that way this will actually be tracked by our right hand as opposed to our left hand like it's set by default. We don't need to worry about that for our left hand since it's automatically, since our motion source is already set to left by default. So we'll be all good there. 
Now, if you'd like, you can go ahead and add a device model. Uh, however, I would, I, I will caution you of this. If you want to add a device model or a static mesh or anything like that, when we go to scale up and down the world, our device models, our static meshes, anything that's attached to the player will not scale up or down with the player themselves. So if you want to add a device model or anything like this, you do want to make sure that you are scaling manually uh, in some way or that you design some way that uh, our device models are being scaled themselves or static meshes or whatever you're using. Otherwise, they'll, as you start to get bigger and bigger, they'll become really teeny tiny and to the point where you may not even be able to see them. Um, same if you go way too small, they, become, they may become so big that you're not able to see anything going on around you. Now something I did almost forget to add to our spectator pawn here is we do want to add a, is we want to add one specific component called the movement, uh, the floating pawn movement. Now this should sound pretty self-explanatory. We're essentially going to be using this to determine how, uh, what direction we want to go in. And we can also use this as well to determine what our max speed is, our acceleration, um, all, all sorts of different uh, values that determine how fast we move in any one direction and what uh, and how we'll be allowed to move. Uh, so I'm actually going to be using this in order to to uh, add input to add movement input to our pawn. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over into our event graph. And I've already gone ahead and deleted the default nodes that are here, the begin play tick, and I, I can't remember what the third one is. I, I can never remember what the third one is. I never leave it in there. Um, but whatever that third node is, I've gone ahead and removed all those. Uh, now let's go ahead and start by bringing in our input access nodes. And I'm gonna go and do this by double checking our project settings just to make sure we have the right names. So we need movement axis left, X and Y, and our movement axis right, Y. So let's go ahead, movement axis left X, and I'm gonna go and put that right there. Movement axis left Y, Ooh, that is the wrong one. Movement axis left Y, and finally we need to get our movement axis right Y. I'm, I'm just gonna go and bring this down a little bit since we're, we'll take care of this in a second. Uh, I wanna go and start up here with our movement axis left X and our movement axis left Y. So this is actually not gonna to be too much of a problem. Uh, this is actually gonna be quite simple. So let's go ahead and grab our floating pawn movement and I want to add input vector. Uh, now you can actually see that this is attached to our floating pawn so we do need to be sure we're targeting this. And we're going to need to pass through a world vector that determines what direction we're moving in as well as how fast we want to move in that direction. So in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and grab our left motion controller, and I'm going to get right vector. Since this is our movement axis left X, this is left and right, we're going to want our right vector. And I'm actually going to multiply this by our axis value. And actually, I'm going to reorganize these nodes here. There we go. And that's going to go into our world vector. Now we'll be doing a very similar thing to our movement axis left Y. So I'm gonna go and copy these down, go and bring this down. Um, but we will need to do a couple quick changes. So of course we need to put in this axis value as opposed to the one we had up here. And we don't wanna go off of right vector since this is why we wanna be able to go forward and back. So we're going to get, ooh, get forward vector. And that's what we're going to feed into our multiply node here as opposed to our get right vector. And that will take care of our movement input here. So now let's go and come down here. I'm going to go ahead and do a few things here to our movement axis right Y. Um, so in order to scale our environment, there's actually a node we can use. So let's see, set scale, I believe it's set world. Here we go, set world to meter scale. Now this we can actually use to, if we actually mouse over this, it, it actually tells us as well, set the world to meter scale, which changes the scale of the world as perceived by the player. Essentially what this means is that we'll be changing the way that the world looks, so that way it looks as though it is increasing or decreasing in size to our specific player here. So in order to do this, we're gonna do a couple things. So actually I don't wanna use our execution node yet because we're gonna need to put one thing in front of this here in a sec. Uh, so I'm going to go and start by creating a new variable. I'm going to call this current scale. And I want to make sure that this is a float as well. Let me go and compile this as well. 
and I want to set our current scale to 100 by default. The reason for this is we can actually see it here too. 100 is the default scale that our world is set to. So by setting it to 100, we will actually have it at the correct scale once we spawn in. If we leave it at zero, we'll actually spawn kind of in the floor. We'll basically be really small and we won't be the correct scale. So I'm going to go and start it off at 100 so that way we start off at the correct scale. And then let's go ahead and get our current scale. And I'm going to want to add the axis value to this. Actually, before we add the axis value, I actually want to multiply our axis value. And the reason for this is our axis value is only capable of ranging between negative 10, uh, negative 10, negative one and positive one. And it's not necessarily a bad thing to do. However, I think that it scales way too slow if you leave it, if you're leaving it so you can only scale one at a time. So I, I go ahead and multiply it by 10 just because it's a little bit better in my personal opinion. Uh, you don't have to do this multiply, but that's just something I personally prefer. Um, and then finally, let's go ahead and clamp this value. And I'm going to do clamp float. And the reason for this, uh, let me actually go and set some values in here. I'm going to set a minimum of 25 and a max of 5,000. And there's a couple reasons for this. One, I never want our axis value or, or for a current scale to go below zero. Uh, that just doesn't seem necessary at any point. We should never have any excuse for our world to be set below zero in terms of scale. So I, don't, I definitely don't wanna go below zero, um, but also I just don't personally don't think that we need to allow you know our players to scale the world up to a billion or whatever and then they just can't even see what's going on anymore. Uh, this is entirely up to you, but personally, I just prefer to do something a little like this. And then let's go ahead and set current scale. Ooh, I meant to grab our execution there. And go and feed that into our world scale. Our return value is going to go into our new current scale value. And our current scale is going to go into our new scale value there. And that will set up our pawn there. And that kind of finishes off all that we need to do here. So now that we're all done with our spectator pawn, I'm gonna do a couple things here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and open up our content browser, go and drag our spectator pawn into the scene. I'm gonna open up our details and I wanna set two, va two values in here. I wanna set auto possess player to player zero. And I wanna set auto receive input to player zero so that way we'll make sure our first player will actually, uh, will actually possess this pawn. And with that, I'm gonna go and jump into VR and we'll go and give this a quick test run. All right, so I'm now in VR. Um, you can't really see my hands even though I am holding them out in front of me. So that's kind of a shame. Um, but other than that, everything else should be working now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold out our left hand and I'm going to try moving around. And you can see as I move my hand around, we'll actually go around the environment. Now this may be a little bit fast for your taste. If you like, you can certainly uh, multiply our axis value or you can just kind of modify our speed so that way we can only go so fast. Um, that's entirely up to you. And now I'm also going to go and scale us. So this is going to be the right hand. So I'm gonna go and scale. You can actually see as I do this, it actually puts me straight out uh, to the point where we're quite big here. And hopefully you can actually see this in uh, well enough in the camera. Uh, <laughs> but you can see I can go all the way out and that's actually my max scale. And you can see I'm moving quite a bit slower now as well because we're now at such a big scale. And you can actually see, now I can fit this whole environment into my view quite easily uh, without having to zoom out very far or anything like that. And I'm actually going to also go ahead and zoom all the way in as far as I can go. I'm trying to do this that way I can still see the environment. <laughs> And there we go, that's actually the smallest I can go. So actually, I am pretty darn small actually. Uh, this is actually, that's actually roughly my actual height and you can actually see I'm quite a bit smaller than what I was. Um, I think I was about there before, maybe there. Um, but you can actually see, now we have a, now we're able to scale in and out into our environment. And uh, yeah, so now we're, now we got quite a, Quite a cool little spectator going on here. And with that, that's how you put together a nice simple spectator pawn that you can use in any VR game. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right hand side. With that, I'll see you in the next reality.